The last couple months have been like the hardest thing I could have ever imagined going to, choosing to do. Oh, it's, uh, sorry, it's upsetting for him. At least the one who has to suffer, but it's upsetting for them because the doctors are saying, it looks like, you know, got some stuff going on. Uh, I'm really sorry, James, that you feel that it's hurting you and it really sucks for you guys. Because ultimately, after pouring our guts and our heart into this little boy. And you didn't care about this child. You didn't care about his well-being. You didn't care about being a good parent. And then to think of a child with special needs that may have been in that same situation and then adopted and then re-abandoned. They gave their child up who had already been adopted. They gave that child up for adoption because they couldn't handle that child. Anything that happened in the home that was hard for us, that's not fair for me to put out there publicly. That's his privacy. It must be so traumatic just to go through the adoption experience, then like be in this home, be put on camera, like be put into the public eye. And now your mother literally just gave you up, like your second mother or third mother. Like at this point, it's, I feel so bad for you. The reason why we can't go into detail of what actually transpired is because we're truly going to protect privacy and not let people know what happened, what everything that went on. To make us make this decision. this decision or to even come to medical professionals with the need to get more help. Or thought, like I, I would feel so guilty and awful if I ever once thought that I needed to rehome my son. There's not a single thing that that little boy, that three-year-old boy of mine that could do to cause me to think he would be better off in a different home. Before we get into the video, please do not send hate to anybody mentioned in this video. All opinions are my own and opinions are not facts. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. So today is the part two, finally, of the full story of the Stauffer family. I posted part one a few weeks ago and I'm a little late getting this video out, but it's finally here. Like I said, this is part two, so if you have not seen part one, I will link it in the description box down below. I highly recommend watching part one before you get into part two. The last thing we talked about in part one, people were questioning where H was. She was posting on social media and there had been no recent pictures of H and there was a lot of speculation of what happened to H and fans were getting very concerned about where he was. So again, I will link this in the description box down below. And before we get deep into the video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new, turn on all post notifications so you don't miss any uploads in the future. So let's get into part two of the Stauffer family. On May 22nd, Micah put a picture on her Instagram with a caption that read as, This week has been such a learning experience. People can throw some really ugly words around and say completely hurtful and untrue statements. But instead of reacting and being hurtful right back, I want to step back and learn from the person in that moment. God forgives like no one's business. And just because naturally I want to defend or stand up for my character, it's not necessary. True character is known and does not need to be shown. Right before Micah and James dropped their video, an update on our family, Micah had uploaded to her Instagram story a very vague message to her fans talking about what they had been going through. And this was the day they actually filmed the video. And this is what she had to say. Roll it. some very personal matters, some very, very private matters. And we have actually just filmed a video that we're gonna edit so that we can get out to you and share with you what is truly going on. But at no point ever have we been trying to withhold information or trying to hide what's going on, never. But some of these things I have to legally protect and it's privacy during certain stages of what's going on. So I apologize if you guys are curious or you're reading these horrible comments and you're not sure what's going on hopefully i'll have a video go out on the vlog either today or tomorrow um, it's been a very hard season for us we are choosing to do and handle this season privately off of social media and doing our best to heal and to work with therapy and all of the things but one of the other reasons why you're not seeing our other children or you're not seeing vlogs on the vlog channel is because of the stuff that we're dealing with behind closed doors um, with 
everything. And also, you're not seeing my children a ton on YouTube videos, not because I'm trying to hide them or anything like that, but right now we're praying and deciding if we want to show our children on YouTube long term, like, or if it's something that we want to do. Um, that's one of the reasons you're seeing a little bit more of Onyx because he's still little, but we're still making the ultimate decision if we would like to keep our children on social media. And that is why you have not seen our big kids a lot. But I just want to say thank you to the people who have been so sweet. Like, are you kidding? Your comments have been so kind, like, so supportive, so amazing. Like, and I'm not talking about the trolls. I'm talking about the good people, like the people that like are so freaking sent from God. Like, it's not even funny. Thank you. Like, you are amazing and just, you don't know what that compliment meant. You don't know what that meant to us. So, thank you. And we'll get you guys that video out as soon as we can. And I just appreciate the respect, the privacy, just the kindness through this really challenging season. So, just, seriously, you know who you are. Just thank you. So sorry about the background noise in that video. It's the only one I could find online. But after she posted this, she posted a little screen picture and it said this. Those who leave everything in God's hands will eventually see God's hands in everything. And then later on that day, James went to her Instagram story and said this. I want to say um, thank you everyone for, for all your support. Amazing comments so far. But um, there's an update on Micah's channel if you guys want to check it out. And finally, on May 26, 2020, Micah and James uploaded a video that was titled An Update on Our Family, where they gave answers to where H has been. And this is what they had to say. Roll it. So this is by far the hardest video James and I have ever publicly had to make. But before I get into the video, I did just want to say thank you to how amazing our viewers have been we have some viewers who have been just like so incredibly kind and respectful of our son's privacy i just want to say thank you like that really got me through some really hard times and i just want to say thanks like you have no idea what that means to me and the, some of the special messages that you've sent like just thank you thank you for the bottom this clip here of Micah, in my personal opinion, it just makes her sound really selfish. Even though she's thanking her viewers for getting her through some really hard times, it's all about her. And it's just like, can you imagine what this little boy went through being in a family and then being ripped out of that family? That was my initial reaction to that clip. But after Micah thanked her viewers, James elaborated on how hard Micah had tried and what they have been doing for H through this entire process. I can't say enough how hard Micah has tried throughout this entire journey and the amount of effort she's put into this and helped as much as she can. You know, with international adoption, sometimes there's unknowns and things that are not transparent on files and things like that. And once I came home, there was a lot more special needs that we weren't aware of and that we were not told. So over the past few years, I've been in numerous therapies to try to help him with all of his needs. And over the last year has been a more intense therapy that he's been in to try to help him as much as possible with his, with his severe needs. And for us, it's been really hard hearing from the medical professionals, a lot of their feedback and things that have been upsetting, really upsetting for us because this is not what we've ever wanted to hear. We've never wanted to be in this position, and we've been trying to get him, get his needs met and help him out as much as possible. It's really hard, isn't it? I mean, we truly love him. If you guys watched part one of this video, you saw the clip of H and Micah and how much progress H had been making in that home. This is why this is so confusing to a lot of people because from the time they brought him home to the time that this happened, the boy seemed to be making a lot of progress. And given the fact that she was on camera wearing a $7,000 bracelet complaining about how expensive H's therapy was, it just makes you really think this kid was a burden on them and he was interfering with their lavish lifestyle. There's not an ounce of our body that doesn't love the pole we're being. There wasn't a, a minute that I didn't try our hardest and I think what Jim's trying to say is that after multiple assessments, after multiple evaluations, Numerous medical professionals have felt that he needed a different fit and that his medical needs, 
he needed more. So this right here was the biggest red flag in this video for me and what sealed the deal on my personal opinion about it because if you take your kid to a medical doctor, therapist, whoever, there is no medical professional in their right mind that's going to say, you know what, this kid is not getting enough in your home. You need to give him up for adoption. I just don't see a doctor or therapist or anybody saying that to any family recommending that they give their own child up for adoption especially a family that has no history of like child abuse or a family that is wealthy i don't see any doctor ever telling a family that we, we haven't made this video yet and it's because we've been trying to protect his privacy his rights and also just try to not mess up his future that was laid out in front of us we're trying our best to make sure we don't impact that at all by making this video and then and that's why like on instagram and stuff i've tried to like let you know as little as I could, but I couldn't tell you anymore because I didn't want to mess anything up with what's going on legally. And if I said something, was I going to mess up things for his future? <laughs> and it's just been a really hard place to be in, like, because you're grieving. You, I want to share with you guys. Like, I know deep down inside that I don't have to say anything like I'm not I don't have to say this I don't have to but I want to like I want to tell you, you guys have been there for us for so much and I want to I want to fill you in on what's going on and what hard like do I feel like a failure as a mom like 500% so when you get like insidious hurtful comments it just like really makes it hurt worse it's not about me at all the biggest struggle that I personally had with this is after finding out everything that they had done in between the time where H wasn't seen in pictures or videos up until this point, they were acting like life as normal. They went on a trip to Bali. They were posting regular videos on their YouTube channel. They stopped everything on their daily vlog channel just because I think they were trying to hide the fact that H wasn't in the home. But given the fact that they went on a full vacation, had a good old time, and were over on Micah's channel uploading videos like what I eat in a day or complete makeover of my basement or cleaning my house with me, stuff like that. It's just like, are you not really grieving for this child? Because how can you act like nothing is wrong? You literally just gave away your child. But it's just like this journey has been, the last couple months have been like the hardest thing I could have ever imagined going to, choosing to do. Because ultimately, after pouring our that's in our heart into this little boy. The reason why we can't go into detail of what actually transpired is because we're truly going to protect privacy and not let people know what happened, what everything that went on. To make us make this decision. this decision or to even come to medical professionals with the need to get more help. Anything that happened in the home that was hard for us, that's not fair for me to put out there publicly. That's his privacy. So we're not going to talk about that. That's not, that's not appropriate. Like that's, and that'll never be appropriate. I didn't adopt a little boy to share these things publicly. Every now and then you may have gotten like a teeny like struggle or like a hardship when I was trying to be like really raw and real, but we haven't intentionally, like day one intentionally, 99, 95% of the struggles we have never For publicly sure. aired ever. The thing that infuriates me about this is like, where was his privacy when you were going through the entire adoption process? Where was his privacy during this clip? I'm gonna be revealing how to picture it to you guys and to the world. And we're so excited to share our little boy with you guys. But we have a thousand piece puzzle and every time someone donates, each puzzle piece is worth $5. Or what about this clip right here? Look at my eyes. We don't bite. Biting is not nice. Look at my eyes. No bite. Or where was his privacy during this clip right here? Like eighth tantrum. No more. Come on, let's go. You're not gonna throw a fit when you don't get your way. That's not okay. Let's go. Are you done fitting? <laughs> Or when you were saying that he just has a meltdown all the time, where was his privacy during this clip? He's had multiple meltdowns. I'm not having a good day today. We never tell you guys the truth. And that's why you don't see on the box. He's probably having a meltdown. 
you know, it makes me so sick that you went on camera saying that he has meltdowns all the time. He's an autistic child that has special needs and saying, oh my God, he's probably having a meltdown. That's why you don't see him in the blogs, blah, 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 blah. You are not respecting his privacy when you are acting like this on camera. So now you want to respect his privacy because you're going to get the heat for it. Sorry, it just makes me so sick to my stomach given the fact that they're trying to lay it on thick that they're trying to respect HS privacy when they did all of this to him, when they exploited everything about him from the time that they decided to adopt. It was non-stop publicly putting everything about this little boy online. The reason we haven't updated you sooner is because the medical professionals, the agencies, multiple people have been allowing to spend time with some different people to see and to make the perfect match and fit for his now new forever family. From the updates we've gotten from the agency and through the adoption agency, like they were able to place him in what they felt was literally the perfect match. When we met, like Jimmy said earlier, when we got, we didn't know a lot of these unknowns. And when agencies or adoption agencies have more pieces to the pie or they have more pieces it makes the matching process a little better yeah. or a healthier match and they found somebody that they felt would be ultimately the best fit and he is thriving he is very happy he's doing really well and his new mommy has medical training. professional training and it is a very good fit and i ask everyone that you know watches this video that supports our family you know, give us grace, give us the support and the privacy that we need during this time for ourselves. And Just because I may be positive on my stories or be having fun, doing something fun, doesn't mean that I'm not like still horribly hurting Agreed. and the same for Jim. So like, just please have grace with us because even though we don't share that publicly, we are still struggling. I mean, we're going to be heartbroken for a very long time. Absolutely. So thank you for everything. And we just really appreciate all of your support and kindness, but just please, Respect, respect our, our privacy. privacy and respect his too it is so strange watching a family that documented an entire adoption a family that went on camera multiple times saying that they wouldn't trade their son for anything and that they wouldn't change anything about the entire process no matter what struggles came their way they would never ever give up on their son and to hear them say we gave him to another family just infuriates me it just seriously infuriates me because this is a five-year-old boy we're talking about here a child that had a family that he loved and that he had brothers and sisters and a mommy and a daddy that he thought was going to be there for him no matter what and when things got tough they gave him away like he was a dog and they have the nerve at the end of this video to say respect our privacy i have no problem respecting hs privacy that little boy deserved privacy a long ass time ago but for you guys to say respect our privacy you don't get privacy after what you did to that little boy that little boy deserved privacy a long time ago and you should have respected his privacy a long time ago but you didn't you seen him as a cash cow and then when he was a burden on you you gave up on him and gave him away like he was a dog you don't deserve privacy neither one of you deserve privacy there are so many families out there that would love to adopt a child like h there are so many families that can't get fortunate enough to afford an adoption like this but you took advantage of the entire situation and saw it as an opportunity to grow your channel, grow your business. So after this video was posted, Micah and James started to get a lot of backlash for the video. And Micah ended up commenting on the video and she said this. We would just never give up on a child with special needs. This is a personal matter to H. It had nothing to do with he just had autism. Multiple scary things happen inside the home towards our other children. And if these events happened with one of our biological kids, after all the help and after the behaviors we witnessed, sadly, we would have no other choice than to seek help and get their needs met. H wanted this decision 100%. We saw that in family time with other people, he constantly chose them and signed and showed tons of emotion to show us and let us know he wanted this. H never had a say in 
his adoption and he won needed more help and also wanted this and we know that a hundred percent what i have to say to this is so much for h's privacy and the other thing i have to say to this i thought we weren't going to talk about what actually happened and the third thing i want to say to this is if it was a biological child of micah's there is no way they would have gave away that child for adoption this is just my opinion but i think that they never saw h as a permanent child in their home they saw him as the adopted child and they saw their biological kids. They take priority over H and I think that's what ultimately made them come to this decision because he was like an outsider to them. Another strange thing that Micah did, she changed all of her bios from her Twitter to her Instagram to her YouTube channel from mommy of five to mommy of four right after they dropped their video. Now, if this were me, Changing my bio would be the last thing on my mind, and I think it would be the last thing on a lot of people's minds. So it's very strange that her first instinct was to go change her bios on her social media. I think that Micah thought everything was just going to go back to normal after they released this video, but this was only the beginning for them and the backlash that they started getting. Now, there were some comments that were more understanding and Micah hearted this one on the video. And the comment read as, some will be quick to judge saying things that they have no clue about. I know how hard you have tried to make everything work. The amount of time and resources are staggering. Those who say, let him be, don't try to fix him, have no clue. Here's the fact of the matter. You gave this boy a chance, a life, when you adopted him from a country and brought him home. In the end, you were doing what was best for H. I pray that your hearts are healed in time. I pray that H thrives with his new family. I pray that everyone shows you grace and mercy in these times. It's easy for some to say what they would do, but until they have lived it, they will never actually know. God bless you and H. Keep your heads up. Love you. Now, at the time of this video dropping, Micah was deleting a lot of comments and the comments were very positive on the video but at the time they were trending on various platforms and the comments on the other platforms were quite opposite of what you were seeing on their video. Comments like, hold on, there is something even worse and unsettling about this whole thing. His four siblings just saw their parents give away one of them. Liar, narcissist, people are not stupid. That poor boy, he deserves better than you guys probably ever gave him. As a special needs mom, I would never shame my kid publicly and tape him on video having tantrums. Fame goes to people's heads and little kids suffer. Apparently, she took down all the vlogs on the vlog channel because people noticed how she was treating H in them. All so shocking and her reputation won't recover from this. Extremely depressed reading about this influencer who raised funds to adopt a son made this her, quote, brand, discovered he had special needs, secretly rehomed him, blocked people asking about him after her followers helped fund the adoption and put out a video making herself the victim. I can't believe you, Micah Stoffer. H wasn't a pet and you brought him into your children's lives. Then you ripped that from them. You never would have done that had it been one of your biological children. Horrible. It really takes a rotten human being to dispose of a child who is in need of a secure and stable home, probably even more than the typical child. You should feel ashamed for even posting this, and you deserve to live with the guilt. Not everything in life is going to be perfect. Once you make a commitment to protect a child and raise him as your own, that's your responsibility. You've completely damaged this poor kid's life. I can almost guarantee that they would never consider rehoming one of their biological children. So for them to look at him like he's disposable is utterly heartbreaking. The backlash was getting overwhelming. Micah ended up turning the like to dislike ratio off of the video and she started losing followers. You would think losing followers would be the last thing on her mind, but no. On her Instagram, she started buying followers in bulk. She went from losing a couple hundred followers a day to gaining over 12,000 followers in one day. People were so furious about this whole thing, they started reaching out to Micah's sponsors, and Micah's sponsors started dropping like flies. 
sponsors like Danimals. We have previously worked with Micah Stoffer and are no longer working with her. We are aware of the news she shared about her family and are very sad to hear about this difficult situation. Fabletics, which was a huge one. They said, we appreciate you flagging this. We can confirm that Fabletics is no longer working with Micah. And then Chili's and Barbie and Huggies, they were all dropping Micah. She got so many sponsors because she adopted H. Everybody was reaching out to every single one. This is only a small portion of her sponsors that dropped her. People were very worried about H and his safety, and a journalist by the name of Sophie Ross posted an update on May 27, 2020. And she said, I just got confirmation that H is in a great foster home, might be temporary or might turn permanent. But in case anyone's wondering where he is, he's safe in the foster system and still in the U.S. Micah saying his new mommy makes it sound different from what it is. She went on to say that, so apparently this foster family is in the process of officially adopting him, which is amazing news. It sounds like H found a safe and loving permanent home and won't be bouncing around or displaced again after this. And she also went on to say, for everyone asking who my sources are, I'm not disclosing that for various reasons, including that it'd be a violation of their trust. But I've had several people close to the situation DM me. That's all you need to know. This is obviously a sensitive situation and I am cognizant of that. On May 29th, 2020, an article that was posted by BuzzFeed that was titled, We Still Don't Know Exactly How the Stoffers Place Their Adopted Autistic Son with Another Family, But Here's What the Experts Say. The article went on to say, two days later, a lot about age, current whereabouts are still unknown. The Stoffers have gone dark on their social media accounts since announcing H would no longer be a member of their family, and they have repeatedly declined to speak to BuzzFeed News. Through their lawyers, the couple said that they would not be releasing any details about why they made the decision to dissolve the adoption or where H is now, citing privacy concerns. One place we know that H is not at is the state government of Ohio, where the family lives. Val Turner, a spokesperson for the family's local child protection agency, Franklin County Child Services, confirmed to BuzzFeed News that H is currently not in their custody. The adoption for the Stauffer family is an international adoption which does not involve our agency, Turner said, adding. It appears that Micah made arrangements with an individual person versus an agency. Turner added that the agency is obligated to investigate a report of ABOSE if one should arise, but any involvement would be confidential. On June 3rd, 2020, the Delaware County Sheriff's Office released a statement regarding H. The statement said, The Delaware County Sheriff's Office has received several inquiries regarding the welfare of a five-year-old child who was recently given up for adoption. This child is not missing. Our primary concern is for the well-being of this child as well as the other children in the household. Our investigation is ongoing and will include contact with all the children to ensure their safety. All adoption cases are confidential and must go through a thorough process with specific requirements and safeguards. In private adoptions, there are the same legal requirements that must be adhered to. These include home studies as well as background checks on the adopting parents. In this case, we are confident that the appropriate process is occurring. In addition, both parties are being represented by attorneys to ensure full compliance with the court process. Due to the confidential nature of the case, we will not be releasing any specific information or further comment. Micah and James's attorneys reached out to People Magazine, and this is what they had to say. In coming to know our clients, we know that they are a loving family and very caring parents that would do anything for their children. Since his adoption, they consulted with multiple professionals in healthcare and educational arenas in order to provide H with the best possible treatment and care. Over time, the team of medical professionals advised our clients that it might be best for H to be placed with another family. Micah and James were forced to make a difficult decision, the attorney state adding, but it is in fact the right and loving thing to do for this child. Now, while all this stuff was going on, Micah was doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. For example, here's a description of one of her videos. If you go to Micah's website, micahstoffer.com, the website doesn't exist anymore. Also, Micah and James had a full vlog channel called The Stoffer Life. The channel has been completely deleted. 
The other thing I noticed is that the Stop for Life Instagram page has been set to private. Another thing that I had noticed is that Micah put a video out on her YouTube channel. It was called Get It Done With Me Cleaning Motivation. And this video was dropped right around the time that an update on our family dropped. And this video has been completely taken down from their channel because they were getting a ton of backlash on that video. And the last thing that I had noticed is that Micah used to have a Twitter. And now if you search for her, her Twitter is completely gone. So she deactivated her Twitter as well. It seems like the only two things that Micah kept normal was she kept up her YouTube channel, Micah Stoffer, and she kept up her Instagram. Approximately two weeks after they dropped an update on their family, they completely scrubbed the video from Micah's channel. One thing that kind of drives me crazy about this whole thing is that James, Micah's husband, has a channel that is called Stoffer Garage. And Stoffer Garage really hasn't been affected by anything that they did to H. I think one reason is because when this whole thing went down, everybody was so focused on Micah. They didn't really mention James a lot in this whole scenario because Micah on her channel, she usually spoke alone about the adoption. So she was in the forefront of everything while James was just kind of in the background of it all. And I think another reason is because Stoffer Garage is just a whole different genre. It's not a family vlog channel. So a lot of his subscribers probably did not hear about what happened because a detailing channel is going to have a completely different subscriber base than a family vlog channel. Now, James did take a break from his Stoffer Garage channel, but he wasn't gone for very long. On June 13th, 2020, approximately two weeks after they uploaded an update on our family, James posted his first video back. And let me tell you, the response wasn't all that great. The video has 8.5K dislikes on it. And if you look at the comment section on this video, they are all positive comments. So James was also deleting comments on this video as well. A video with over 250,000 views and only 600 comments, you can tell he's been deleting comments, but some of his viewers are just so like clueless on anything that he has done. Like people were even saying on the video, why so many dislikes? Like they don't get it. I think it's really important to mention in this video that Stoffer Garage is connected to this whole thing. And I think it's very important to understand that they built Stoffer Garage off of the adoption of H. They wouldn't even have this channel if they didn't grow like they did. So it's very aggravating to see his channel doing just fine. And there's a little boy out there that got ripped from a home that he knew so well for two years. And then James just goes on like life as normal. I get he has other children to feed and everything else, but given the fact that they have made so much money off of this adoption, there are so many other things that they could do and not be on YouTube. Before this whole thing happened, James was under a million subscribers, but since everything happened, he's been uploading videos as normal and he has hit a million subscribers. This channel hasn't really been affected. He posted the video that he did when he came back, but as he kept uploading more and more and the story died down, this channel is getting the normal response as it always has. The views are through the roof and they're making a lot of money off of this channel. If you look at the social blade for Stoffer Garage, they are still making a ton of money on this channel. His estimated yearly earnings are anywhere from $21,000 a year up to $300 plus thousand dollars a year. And the bottom line on these social blades is not what you make on YouTube. They got to be making at least a couple hundred grand a year off of this channel alone. Have they been overall affected by announcing this? Yes, absolutely. They lost a ton of sponsors and they're making nowhere near what they were before but geez you guys a couple hundred thousand dollars a year that's a lot of money a ton of money people would to make that kind of money so i think it's very important to stress to you guys that stoffer garage played a big part in this whole thing On 
on June 24th, 2020, approximately a month after they dropped an update on her family, Micah Stauffer broke her silence and posted an apology to her Instagram, and the apology read as this, I want to first off apologize for the uproar and take full responsibility of all the hurt that I have caused. This decision has caused so many people heartbreak, and I'm sorry for letting down so many women that looked up to me as a mother. I'm sorry for the confusion and the pain that I have caused, and I'm sorry for not being able to tell more of my story from the beginning. I could have never have anticipated the incidents which occurred on a private level to ever have happened, and I was trying my best to navigate the hardest thing that I have ever been through. I apologize for being so naive when I started the adoption process. I was not selective or fully equipped or prepared. I received one day of watching at home online video training and gained my Hague adoption certification, which was required by my accredited adoption agency. For me, I needed more training. I can't say I wish this never happened because I'm still so glad H is here and getting all the help he needs. I also know that even though he is happier in his new home and doing better, that he has still experienced trauma and I'm sorry. No adoptee deserves any more trauma. I wanted to help so bad I was willing to bring home any child that needed me. For this, I was naive, foolish, and arrogant. I wish so bad I would have been more prepared and done more. I wish the decision to disrupt never had been made. Adoption and all special needs are amazing, and I have a ton of respect for every adoptee. Adoption parent and special needs parent, I look up to you in a million ways, and I'm sorry for hurting the community in any way. Lastly, to debunk a couple complete rumors, we did not adopt a child to gain wealth. While we did receive a small portion of the money from videos featuring H and his journey, every penny and much more went back into his care. Getting H the care and services he needed was very expensive, and we made sure he got every service and resource we could possibly find. Secondly, we are not under any type of investigation. I'm hoping to share more from my side of the story soon. And lastly, I'm so sorry for letting you down. I also want to mention that moms need a safe place to ask for help when they are struggling. No questions asked. We love H and know that this was the right decision for him and his future, praying that H only has the best future in the entire world world. It's important to take note that the post has almost 16,000 likes and she did limit the comments and there's only like six on the post and some of the comments say love you, you still have my support, love you girl, glad to see you back. So she does have support from some people obviously. But after this post came out, Micah has not said anything any further on social media. They did try to have a Q&A on Micah's channel at one point, but the stream ended really fast. But other than that, Micah has not been seen on social media at all. <laughs> Five days later, after Micah released her apology on June 29, 2020, the Delaware County Sheriff's Office released a statement that they had concluded their investigation on Micah and James, and they gave instructions on where you could find a redacted copy of the investigation report. The letter said the Delaware County Sheriff's Office has completed its investigation related to a local adoption process which has been highly publicized in the news media by other interested parties. The case is closed without any charges. Now I didn't reach out personally and get a copy of this report but I did get some bits and pieces from a couple different channels which was Spill and the Dad Challenge podcast and since my report is so pieced together I have typed out the highlights of the report and and I will be reading from those highlights, but they do come straight from the report. So let's get into everything. According to the report, they spoke to an assistant prosecutor, Beth Mattoon, that was helping with the case. She stated a foreign adoption has to be finalized there first, and when they come back to the States, they have the option to finalize the adoption here, but it's not required. Mattoon stated the Stoffers never finalized the adoption here in the U.S. Micah stated that H would obtain self-injuries from sucking his thumb so raw that he would have blisters. A therapist recommended a thumb guard and H would rip it off. When asked about the duct tape, she stated that it was just a, quote, bad judgment call, and she should have paid $200 for a new device. Micah also stated that H would bite his thumb, get blisters, and his thumb would always be completely white and raw. 
Micah stated every time when H came home, he would go into his closet and rock nonstop. Micah would encourage H and say, come on, what are you doing? Come on, H, let's go play. Micah stated that they did the GoFundMe a long time ago when they started their journey of the adoption and they earned a total of $800. Micah also stated that the adoption of H was a total of $42,000. And she also stated that they used every penny of the $800 from the GoFundMe to start an initial home study. The staffer stated that they received multiple phone calls from people that had been watching H, including medical professionals, and they stated they couldn't take care of him anymore. Micah stated that multiple people had quit on them. She stated it was because H had such, quote, severe aggression towards the other kids. The staffer stated that one of the many reasons they chose to give H to another family was that they had to hire someone full-time to watch after H, which was very expensive. They claimed H would physically their other children and that they had video evidence to back up these claims. The report also indicated that the staffers were informed during the investigation that it's not uncommon to see this in kids that are adopted overseas, that children typically don't adjust well in a home with younger children. The person that took this report also stated, in his opinion, placement of children like age typically do better in homes where there are no children or homes where there are one or two kids that are a lot older because they can't give the one-on-one attention or supervision that they need in the home. The staffer stated that they were concerned about what would happen as H got older and stronger. They stated that it was a major concern, the safety of their younger children. Micah stated that there were private therapists coming into the home for seven hours a day. She stated that for seven months, the therapist had it all documented in medical records, their attempts to, quote, control H. In the last two months before they made the decision to rehome H, the therapist allegedly told the staffers there was nothing more that they could do to help the child. The staffers stated at the end of the ABA therapy, they had to hire someone else 24-7 to keep an eye on H so he wouldn't be in contact with the other kids. Micah stated that H would chuck toys at the other children and try to them in the head. She also stated that H would take out the vent registers out from the floor in his room and try to beat the other kids with it. Micah stated that it was very experience for the kids. Micah stated that when H went to his new home, her little girl told her, quote, I'm so happy I don't have to get punched in the head anymore. Micah stated they did their very best to keep them safe and protected. She also stated that, quote, it had to happen and that H's doctor told her that H needed a better fit. Micah told the detective that her family had been receiving and described one in graphic detail. The detective informed her about the steps they could take to protect their family. But Micah interrupted the detective and said she had received 35 th- The Stoffers also said that they were moving out of their current home. Stoffer said the child's new family was scared because of everything that was happening and wanted to maintain their privacy. The detective met with the rest of the children in the home and they all seemed to be in good health. On June 9, 2020, the detective met with H and his new family. The adopted mother was singing a song to the child as he sat on her lap, smiling. H was able to say, Mama, and go when prompted. He was also able to stay open to ask his new mother to open the blinds for him. The detective observed him to be happy, well cared for, active, and without signs of mistreatment. The report ended with there was no mistreatment or harm to the Stoffer's biological children. The report also stated that the second adoption process was being conducted legally. So as far as this report goes, H is in good hands and he seems very happy and healthy, which is all we can really ask for. There is no doubt in my mind that he has went through some because of all of this, but I'm so happy that he is with a family that is going to love him and take care of him the way he should be. Even though H is in good hands and while everybody waited for this report to come out, they couldn't help but be furious over the entire situation. Micah and her past got dug up and there were a lot of questionable things that she did before the adoption of H and during the adoption of H and after the adoption of H that a lot of people got furious over. And I guess I should correct myself, Micah and James, their past got dug up because James isn't innocent in all of this either. P. 
People uncovered a Facebook group that Micah had been in where she asked several different questions about China adoption. On August 5th, 2018, after they had already adopted H, we are praying about adopting again and my husband wanted me to ask what special needs would you consider minor or relatively easy to manage that most people wouldn't consider easy? And then on August 15th, 2018, she said, we are going back for our second adoption and wanted to see if anyone has written a blog post or has a good article on picking a child. I want this time to feel like it just happened versus searching for a child. Any good reads, please send them my way. So based on this post, they were already considering adopting a second child, which baffles people even more because how can you have the struggles that you're having with H and then even consider adopting a second child with special needs? It just doesn't make any sense or add up. And then on January 20th, 2019, Micah posted another question that said, our son adopted from China is very delayed, but is obsessed with food. I understand the reasoning. However, even if he just ate, he always stares at everyone when they eat. You can't eat food without him watching you eat, even if he has food in front of him. Has anyone experienced this? Does it lessen with time? And it drives my husband bonkers. So based on all the old videos that people were digging up that I showed in part one, and based on these China adoption questions, especially this one right here, you can tell that H was a burden on them and that they weren't as understanding with him as they would be if this was their biological children having these issues. H had food anxiety and instead of trying to be understanding, they called his anxiety meltdowns. This is an autistic child we're talking about here. They turned on the camera and filmed it. Here are a couple clips of what I'm talking about. But one thing you guys don't see a lot of on our vlogs is as soon as we come downstairs, if food isn't immediately ready, we have meltdowns every single time because we're still working through our food anxiety. So right now we're having a little bit of meltdown. I'm holding him so he feels much better, when I'm, but I'm trying to cook. It's a little crazy. It's okay. It's okay. We are having meltdowns because we've already had breakfast and we just want to keep eating and it's not time to eat. So we're gonna sit down. Sit down. We have to wait, you can have a snack. I don't have a problem giving him as much food as he wants. It's more principle, it's about we don't just throw fits to get our way, so we're trying to work through that. The other thing is the whole thumb sucking situation. I know I talked about this in part one, but I found the full clip of where his hand was duct taped and I wanted to play you guys the clip. Roll it. Hi, What are you doing in there, man? You're reorganizing the shoe closet for me, eh? Boy, huh? He's a silly boy. It's just so messed up to me to see a little boy with his hand duct taped with a fake hand on it. It's just like, I just don't understand how that could just be a poor judgment call. And then on March 25th, 2019, Micah asked this, when I go to the child waiting pages, I tend to see a lot of kids with more severe needs. Wanted to ask people that are actually in the adoption process, are you still seeing and reviewing mild need files? Anything surgically correctable or easy to manage day to day? for little ones five and under. So even at this point, they were still considering adopting another child. I found a clip of Micah talking about whether she wanted to have more children after she had her fifth child. And this is what she said about the whole thing. Roll it. Conversations that James and I have been having in the last several weeks is, is our family complete or not? I told him the other day that I went to the OBGYN's office for like my six week checkup and I just felt like my family wasn't complete. And he said, you know what? He needs a little bit more time to pray about it and think about it. So he's not ready to commit, but I feel like I would totally have one more or adopt one more if that was in our future. I have no idea what's gonna happen. He thinks five is plenty. Could I take on one more? Totally. Do I have a room for one more? Totally. So it's one thing that we're gonna kind of think about. Like I said, if I got to choose, I think my answer would be yes. But I don't want James to change his mind just because I want something, if that makes sense. So I want it to be like a mutual decision. And if it's just my decision and me forcing him to change his mind, 
I don't feel like that's healthy either. It's just so strange. With five kids, she was ready to have another one or she was ready to adopt another one. And this was before they made the decision to rehome H. So it just doesn't make any sense to me. It seems like James was done with having kids. He didn't want any more, but she wanted more. And I want to talk a little bit about where she mentioned in the report that H was very, very violent towards her other children. I found a clip of H getting a little jealous of the other kids, and he was very calm. He was anything but violent. Roll the clip. Thank you for my cuddles. Thank you. She put your arm. I don't know. It just Um, I don't know if we should have ten. You don't want to tell Mark it's a cookout jelly. Look at that well, one. Well, it's 15. Go, go. It's fine. It's 15, so if we have 10 kids. He does not let other people touch me. He does not let other people hug on me. He gets very jealous and protective, which is really funny. So if the other kids come and, like, love on me and hug on me. Oh, Kova. Yeah, yeah. He pretty much just said, chop, chop, get out of here. Like, I don't get it. She literally said his jealousy was funny, and she even egged it on for him to get jealous. If he was actually violent towards those other kids, like Micah claims, wouldn't you think the children would be, like, terrified to even make him jealous, and Micah would be terrified to even egg him on to get jealous? It just doesn't add up to me, you guys. Moving on, there was a few clips that got dug up that Micah and James had interviews with people about their YouTube channel. And the first clip I want to show you guys is of James and he's talking about what made their YouTube channel grow. What gave them that push to be successful? And this is what he had to say. Roll it. Really? What was like kind of that aha moment or that turning point that you might have had that you started to see growth? Yeah, I think our, our you know, we were up to about uh, within the first four years, we were about 70,000 subscribers we got to, and we started to take it more seriously, like I said, after that first two years. Mm -hmm. um, but we still had a lot of work to do and a lot of learning. Um, and we also were, Michael was starting her channel, so we were focusing a lot on that, and with equipment and all of our different gear, it kind of helped bring things up on that channel as well. Um, but when we went to China to adopt our son, a lot of people from China, from other countries, and even our fathers here in North America, kind of following along with us, and they were getting really revved up, and everybody okay. started getting super excited about it, and we're like, this is really cool. So right. at that point, we started revving up our content, especially when we went to China, we took all of our kids with us. So it's awesome. for two weeks, we were putting up daily vlogs and everybody was loving it. And we kind of just started really running with it from there. And then in this next clip, Micah had an interview and the interviewer asked her what her greatest failure was. And instead of actually thinking of a failure, she stresses to the interviewer that this isn't actually a failure, it's just a challenge. But her mind immediately went to H's adoption, which is very weird. Even if she saying out loud that she doesn't see it as a failure. If her mind went there immediately, then usually subconsciously you're thinking that it is your greatest failure. Roll the clip. A favorite failure and how has maybe a failure in your life set you up for future success? So I wouldn't call it a failure, but I would call it something that was really, 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 really challenging. Um, we recently adopted a little guy from China. Definitely not a failure. But when we adopted him, he had a totally different diagnosis than what we were told. Um, we were told that he had a brain tumor. And as a cancer nurse, I was comfortable with that moving forward. And he actually had severe brain damage, severe um, autism, and some severe delays that may mean that he may live with me for the rest of his life. Something that we just literally were not ready for. It's just so strange to me her mind went there. That was her first answer. Now, kind of playing off where she didn't know he had autism, I found the original video where they announced to their audience that H had autism. And I want to play a little bit of this video for you guys. So roll the clip. We went to get tested for autism about four weeks ago, and then we finally got the prognosis and diagnosis for him two weeks ago. He did indeed have autism. He had level three autism, which is considered the most severe form. We kind of knew that he had autism going into it. So that wasn't like a big shocker and that wasn't really hard to hear. Hearing that he has level three was a little bit harder. And then when she did an IQ test, he, she said that his IQ was below average. That was another <laughs> a big blow to hear. Just, I was like, what does the future look like? Will this be something where he could get to level yeah. one one day or could he get to level two? There's probably a 1% chance that he'll ever go to college. And I just want you to know that, like, don't get your hopes up. That probably won't happen. We heard that our hearts tough. sunk. Like it was the worst news anybody could tell us. And I'm not saying because like we want a perfect child. It was just really hard to stomach. You guys knew when we adopted from China, they told us that he had a brain tumor. 
and no, they said that his IQ was completely up to no par, delays no delays and no issues. So when we get all of this news, he doesn't have a brain tumor, which is fantastic, but he does have several issues, ADHD, um, level three autism, level three autism may live with you for the rest of your life, may never go be potty trained. Like when we heard all of these things, yeah. it just hurt. Like it just hurt. Like, There's I don't know unknowns. why, like it just hurt. Like I remember like praying to God and say like, I trusted you so much and like you gave me a little bit more than I than I knew what to do with and I just wish he could be able to overcome this. And we love our son so much, like we want the best for him. I'm gonna stop it here for just a second. There's more to this I wanna play for you guys. But if you look at this video, James just looks really angry in this entire video. And maybe he's just trying to stomach all of the news because they weren't expecting this many special needs. But when you have a child biologically, you never know if your child is gonna be perfectly healthy or if they're gonna have special needs. It's a risk you take when having children and it's no different if you adopt, period. That's just what comes with being a parent. You have to take the news and overcome it and be the best parents you can be and not give up on your children. The next part of this clip, they start out by saying that it's been difficult making vlogs because of how they have been dealing with tantrums and stuff like that. And I just thought this clip was interesting that they even mentioned it. So roll this next part. Like, I mean, we've struggled to vlog sometimes because we have these, these roller coaster days. So this is what will happen emotions. sometimes when we're vlogging. Like Jimmy was saying, I'm trying to cut you off. But like there, what will happen would be like, so we would start to vlog and maybe it would go into like a full blown tantrum and we don't know how to parent that tantrum because it's just out of control. And then we're just like, I want to turn the camera off. I'm so upset and I'm not doing a good job. I just want to do it the right way. And sometimes. We don't know what to do. And it's like, it's just super difficult sometimes. So that's why it's, some, we just don't vlog that day or we don't complete that day. And there's just several times where we one would break down in tears and just be like, I just don't know what to do. And then there was other times when he would have meltdowns and we were just like, I can't do, I can't do this today. If you didn't hear that last part, she said, I just can't do this today. And I can completely understand. Like when you're a parent, I'm a parent. And there's times when stuff gets so hard and you're just like, I don't know what to do. I can't do this today. And I get having that feeling, but it's just so interesting knowing what happened today and looking back on these videos and that H was interfering with them vlogging on certain days. Not like our worlds are over, like they're not, they've just no. begun. But we just have to, one, accept 100% unconditionally the news, you know what I mean? Yeah. Two, we have, <laughs> two, we have to grieve the possibility of the son that we thought we were gonna get and that's a little bit hard to grieve, not like I thought you were gonna be like this and you're not so I don't care about you, no, like it's more like we I have to, to grieve. There was falsification in his information yeah. in China, but we have to properly grieve that um, of what you thought your future was going to look like because it may not look like that. And you don't want to like be disappointed every day. I thought that part was really interesting where James just goes, we were lied to. It just looks like he's really angry. It looks like they're both just so upset over the entire situation because they adopted a boy that they thought had a completely different diagnosis and it's not going the way that they planned. Now this next part I found really interesting because Micah's just like, I wanna love you like a mama. And just given the words that she's choosing, it's just really interesting because it just makes me think that she had a different love for H than she did for her biological children. I wanna just love him like a mama and i'm not saying i don't already i do but i want to take the therapist part and like all of the pressure and all of the oh my gosh we have to fix this oh my gosh like we've got to meet the milestones we can't we have to change this like i don't want to think about that i want to be able to say micah if for some reason this is the best version of him today and he's a 30 year old grown man and this is all that he's capable of which i don't believe that to be true at all I still love you unconditionally. I still care about you. You're still important. You're still incredibly valued. I don't want you to perceive everything as perfect and that like I'm a special needs mom and I just fell in love the second. Like it took me time and I'm still learning to accept, learning how to be a better special needs mom. That statement by her, I'm a special needs mom and I fell in love that second. I mean, it took me time. That statement right there really, really just makes me turn my head a little bit, look at her and just think, you really didn't love him like you did your other children, did you? I don't know, you guys. You'll have to let me know what you think about that in the comments below. 
Moving on, in part one, I have already talked about how Micah assaulted a pregnant nurse, and that was one of the things that people dug up on Micah was that incident that happened in Ohio. Another thing that people brought up is that Micah was very fake on camera, that she was obsessed with money and she was obsessed with getting YouTube famous. And one thing I wanna bring up is that Micah has a second channel. That's called Cash Crush, and this channel is very interesting because it's basically a channel that teaches you step-by-step -step how to make money on sites like eBay or YouTube, and this just goes to show that she knows a ton about social media. She knows a ton about how to make money. She knows a ton about YouTube and algorithms. It really makes you question the whole adoption even more because she's such an expert when it comes to these things. Before Micah started a channel on YouTube, she used to sell on eBay, and here's a clip of her talking about how much she made selling on eBay. Roll it way back when I used to do eBay videos and I used to be a super seller and make a pretty good coin on eBay. I used to make anywhere from six to $11,000 a month on eBay. It was amazing. It was so much fun. I loved it. Now that's a lot of money. But in this other video that Micah has on Cash Crush, she talked about how much debt her and James had and what they did to get out of debt. Roll it. We were young when we started the Dave Ramsey plan and we paid off over $150,000 worth of debt. Student loan debt, credit card debt, mortgages, just bills out the wazoo. We were dumb and we just had a hunger for fancy things and we didn't have the money to fund the fancy things or we just racked things up in our college tuition. Just honestly, we were not very financially sound. We weren't very intelligent with our money. We made a lot of bad, poor choices. So we had over $150,000 worth of debt and we were able to get completely debt free. That is a lot of debt to pay off. And the fact that she said they had a hunger for fancy things should tell you a lot. In this next clip, she talks about how her and her husband used to dumpster dive and sell the things on Facebook, Marketplace, and eBay, and those kind of sites. We actually became dumpster divers, as crazy as that sounds. My husband would dumpster dive behind buildings and sell all of the things that he found on eBay, he sold on Craigslist, we sold Facebook Marketplace everywhere. So this just goes to show that they were experts at this sort of thing, and this also backs up the claims that were made from neighbors in Indiana. They were constantly trying to sell stuff, they were constantly trying to make the quick buck, and they were constantly trying to generate as much money as they could. Moving on, a channel by the name of the Dad Challenge Podcast who's been covering the story since it came out. He posted a more recent interview with someone from Micah's past, and there were a few clips that I found very interesting. Remember in part one where I told you guys to kind of keep the thought in the back of your mind that Micah was looking for men? out of state on a dating app that was called OkCupid okay where she met James. This clip plays into that. They were trying to figure out with Koba and that she was moving to Indiana then and he wanted to be close to her and he was fighting it because he's like I want her here with me mm -hmm. in Ohio mm -hmm. and you're moving her and he <laughs> he caved and eventually moved to Indianapolis to be closer to her. So Kova's father had to move to Indiana to be closer to his daughter, and Josh asked her if she thought that Micah did it intentionally to keep Kova away from him, and this is what she had to say. Roll it. I mean, and this is what m me and my Bo discussed. We said, like, could she be doing it just to get away from yep. him, like to get Kova away so she has full, yep. you know, that narcissistic, it's, it's only me, I'm the one who raised you yep. type thing, like, is the only thing we could conclude, because why would you not want to have... This person also said that Micah and James rehomed a bunch of dogs. I've seen how many dogs they had, and I, I've had three dogs at, at one point, until one, the third passed away a couple years ago. I mean, like dogs are a big responsibility too. And then I saw them rehoming. I was like, I'm a huge dog lover. So I was like, that's unfortunate. She also went on to say that Micah reached out to her over the years over the weirdest things. It, it, she would reach out about the weirdest things, like fitness things throughout the years, fitness advice, being a, you know, fitness professional, um, being in, in, so it, it was very surface level. So I, I mean, I think that's how she is with everybody. It's unclear who this person was in this interview because she wanted to keep her identity private. Moving on, in a second video that was posted recently on Josh's channel, he did an interview with somebody that he kept their identity private. He did not interview this person on camera, but he made it perfectly clear in the video that he wasn't going to give up the source. But the claims that are made in this video are pretty significant. 
duplicate and I want to play a few for you guys, but I just want to stress to you guys that there was no public source that was given in this video. I will say that I trust Josh and trust that he is doing his proper research and would never post something like this if it didn't come from a legitimate source. The first clip I want to play you guys is that Kova never told her dad's side of the family that H was violent to them in any way, which is very interesting. One of the realizations was that Kova never, ever, ever told her dad and that side of the family that H was ever. It never came out. It was never a thing that she came for a visit and said, oh, he was did this to me. He pulled my hair, he punched me, whatever. It was never. They, she never, ever, ever mentioned it. Josh then went on to talk about how Micah has been acting ever since they dropped the video and since she hasn't been on social media. Is that she doesn't actually think that Micah thinks she did anything wrong. She's just going about her day like this. None of this is going on in the peripheral that YouTube people like me are talking about this, that every news media outlet has covered it. Magazines. Occur. She just it's just like, oh, it is what it is. It's she doesn't feel like. She, this person feels that Micah has no remorse for this. Josh then went on to state how James has been acting since all this stuff happened. But from what I heard, absolutely he just does whatever Micah tells him to do. James is a passive person. He is, he hates the drama going on right now. He's very heavily medicated right now based on the th and things going on in his life because of what Micah has caused here. He then goes on to say that the video and update on our family they weren't even going to talk about it, but their management team made them make the video and upload it. They were unwilling to talk about this. They were not going to say a word and they were forced by their management company to come out and do the apology video. Josh then elaborated on the Indiana thing more and how Micah moved to Indiana to be closer to James and what might be her true intentions behind the move. So he followed them to Indiana. Micah moved to Indiana because she thought that would be her way of getting Kova full time. And it worked because Kova's dad and his new wife went out there to move out there and he had to convince his new wife to move out there to, so he could be close to his daughter. Kova's dad and new wife had kid move, moved south. Five or six months later, this person said that Micah and James moved back to Ohio. What does that tell you? Right? They were just waiting for them to leave and they moved right back to Ohio. It's just very interesting listening to when her and James talked about meeting on an OK Cupid and how Micah said that she was searching for men that were out of state given the circumstances with Kova's father. And then the biggest part of this video was something that Micah had told Kova. And again, this is all allegedly, but this is what he had to say about it. Roll it. Here is the hardest thing about this whole video. And Again, this is just their story. Kova was told by Micah that H was gonna her in her sleep. I could not believe that she would say something like that. But then I thought to myself, yes, she would because narcissists don't understand what they're saying. Let's not forget he's four, everybody. She said this to her. Now, there's no proof of this. This is just this person saying this because Kova said it to this person. This channel has been getting a lot of backlash lately because of his coverage on the Stoffers. And what I want to say to this, because of making this video, it just makes me so angry about what they did to this little boy, especially when you see everything put together. And I just want to say, I appreciate that Josh has kept this story alive because I think people need to be reminded of it because what they did was absolutely horrible to this little boy. And given the fact they built so many channels, including Stoffer Garage, off of this adoption, it blows my mind that they still have the platforms that they do because this little boy will never, ever be the same. But that's just my personal opinion on the matter. I would love to know what you guys think about this entire situation in the comments below. So please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, turn on all post notifications, comment down below your thoughts on the entire situation, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.